Hello YouTube viewers. It's uh, middle October here in South Florida and I've got a new project I'm working on. I was acquired this I acquired this uh, old rocking chair from a friend in the area and it belonged to their grandmother and they uh, no longer have uh, an area for it so I agreed to take it and it uh, means a lot to, to this person so uh, I agreed I'd do my very best job in taking care of it and hold on to it for as long as possible. Uh, I thought initially the chair just needed some refinishing and they had mentioned that it had been repaired once and I'm doing the video because it looks like it's going to get a lot more involved than just simple uh, refinishing. I ended up having to take the uh, legs off because everything seemed to be loose so as it turned out taking off the um, some of these spindles was relatively easy but one of them was resistant turned out on that one there was a screw going through here which I didn't know because it had the end cap on and that was kind of what was holding this other leg in place so not knowing that I managed to pry it off but of course um, in doing so well, we, uh, on one of these pieces here it took a little bit of yeah I think that's it a little bit of the uh, chunk out of it so I'll have to figure out what I'm gonna do with that I had another issue I discovered also and that is one of these spindles was completely split all the way through so yesterday I um, I glued it in place here I decided to use uh, go with the uh, Gorilla glue rather than the right wood glue because it tends to expand and I just thought that might work in our favor here so I'll try to document it as best I can and on this repair job as we go along here. There were quite a few dings and indentations on the bottom of these rails. So I went and sanded everything down the best I could. Slow process, but we'll be getting there slowly but surely. I like to use a um, stripper product to get some of that finish off. This is what I use. It says goof off. Liquid sprayable stripper and it comes with this little spray bottle. But caution you when you use this. Um, I had a, initially on a pair of vinyl gloves and some of it got on one of my fingers and it ate right through and I'll tell you it burns pretty good. So then I uh, took those off, washed my hands with soap and water real good and then I put on uh, I use Gorilla Gloves for a lot of the projects I use, and uh, same thing happened there. It went right through the Gorilla Gloves. It didn't seem to damage them, but the solution got through on, a, on another one of my fingers, and it, you'll know immediately because it's very potent, very potent, and it, it burns like heck. So uh, anyway, this is uh, what we've got going on here. Um, took off a lot of the finish just by spraying it on. And I used a little small wire brush that I have to uh, to brush to brush in uh, some of the crevices here, and uh, that took a lot of it off. And then I went and uh, with the hose outside here, I did this outside outside the garage, and that way I was able to rinse off the um, the residue and just uh, wash it away. Uh, as you could see, it does a pretty good job. I'm sure we'll have to give it another uh, give it another try to see if it takes some more off. But I was pretty pleased the way this worked. What I wanted to just do is show you the um, this is what it looks like after one treatment with the goof off, and uh, it doesn't look very good after you get the first treatment on. You could probably see here. It's pretty bright out here. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. And uh, this is after three treatments, and it looks significantly better. And also, I give it a as best I could a, a light sanding. So I wasn't sure when I started this project whether I was going to stain it or paint it. But I'm thinking now uh, I might paint it. And also, I'm going to show you what I do with this. I had to have to repair this because there's a notch taken out of here so what I did was I cut out a, a um, piece of wood and then 
I'd fit it in into this notch and I gradually and I marked it as I needed to let's see if you can see that and I gradually got it to uh, fit very nicely there as you can see I just stuck a little notch in there what I'm going to do is clamp it in place glue it and clamp it and then I could just file it down I was a little reluctant to use the um, uh, wood filler I just didn't think it had the strength that I need so we'll see how this goes I'll get some glue in there and clamps and then file her down okay we let this repair just let the glue set overnight and take the clamp off and as you can see that's what it looks like and We'll just do some filing down on that so we get smooth all around. And this is the repaired piece, as you can see. It came out pretty good. I just uh, ended up using a file and some sandpaper, and uh, not too bad at all. You might, re you might remember early on I had to remove a. Uh, wood screw. Oops, I just dropped it. <laughs> Here it is. How to remove this wood screw and this end cap which was used to help stabilize this leg which really didn't work well at all. You can see there's a hole in there. I do want to cover up that hole just give us a little bit more surface area to bond the leg onto. And uh, this is oops, this is what the other end looks like. So what I came up with to fix this is cut this wooden dowel. I had to narrow it down. I ground it down a little bit on one end here because this was not a uniform diameter all the way through here. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to put a little glue on there and stick it in here. And I had to measure it exact so I don't want it to protrude too much. And I'm going to glue it in place, cover up that hole. I wanted to share a, a tip with you, something that I found that helped out here. Again, this piece here only got the one coat of the goof off, but it does loosen it up pretty good. And as you can see here, right down in here between these spindles, I cleaned that out really nice and without too much effort. Instead of trying to get in there with sandpaper, but what I did, I'll try to do this with one hand, very simply is I use my pocket knife now being careful not to go in at an angle like this but more like an up and down kind of angle Let's see if I can capture this just by going like this I don't know if you can see this very well but it really made it a lot easier to take some of this old finish off but if you just keep working at that it just, it just really, see, simplifies it, but you don't want to be cutting the wood, but that's just old finish coming off, you can see it, see, if you can see there, and this is where I was able to do it with two hands, but I just want to pass that along to you again, uh, keep your blade up and down, you don't want to be gouging out any wood, so just keep it up and down, do a scraping motion. Um, I always keep my uh, pocket knife uh, blade uh, razor sharp, and so that's a big help too. So if you're having trouble with it, maybe uh, sharpen up your blade. So that took me about, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes, I guess. I didn't really time it, but it does an excellent job, you know, with the pocket knife. And the other nice thing about it is it allows you to get right down to the base of these spindles. See? To clear out any of that crud. <laughs> so it works pretty good. So again, just wanted to pass a little tip along. Yeah, what I did was after giving another treatment with the uh, goof off, which is again very caustic, so make sure you wear hand and eye protection when you use it. But then I uh, rinsed off with the, I uh, used the garden hose and I just uh, rinsed off the whole chair because I don't want to be breathing that in 
for uh, dealing with that to getting on my skin uh, when I go to sand it. I just want to show you the difference here on the sanding. These three spindles I sanded and these of course haven't gotten to yet. It's not bad because that uh, remover does a pretty good job of loosening things up and just use number uh, number 60 sandpaper and just go over this lightly and it cleans up pretty nice. I elected to keep these two pieces separate rather than glue them back together because I thought I had a better, better access with the painting aspect of the job. And of course I masked off the, the holes so as not to get paint in them. And also the ends mask them off to keep them nice and uh, free of any paint so that the glue would set and adhere better. That's what it looks like. Now I did have couple issues here as careful as I tried to be I did have the paint run so what I did was I just lightly sanded it over I don't know if you could see that or not there and, and over over here you could see that and what I did was I sanded over that and um, just very lightly and I'll go over that again with uh, some more spray paint also here, hold on, let me turn this off for a second and I'll flip the, flip the chair over. I want to show you something else. On the other side of the chair, some of the wood filler that whoever tried to fix this once before, the wood filler came out. So, as you can see, I had to do a little repair here to cover up that seam with some wood filler. Here's the product that I used. It comes in a small little uh, two ounce size and uh, this is the paint that I've been using this rust-oleum only got that because the uh, color is a color that my wife wanted to use and I couldn't find it into in anything other than the rust-oleum so that's why I elected to go with that and, uh, so we're ready uh, we're ready for painting on this side I pretty much had finished with the painting. I put on uh, several coats of the of the uh, Rust-Oleum paint and then I actually put on uh, some coats of uh, clear. But what I did was uh, then decided to reassemble the top and the bottom part, you know, which is this part and then to the base here. Uh, interesting thing is, um, well, I, 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 using a glove, I put the glue in the hole and I moved it around to the edges and then I moved the glue carefully around all the edges you know the male and the female parts here and I get just what I hope for with this um, Gorilla Glue because it tends to expand and that's what I was hoping for to give a little bit more stability to the joint area now there was a uh, unexpected uh, problem that developed because it appeared and maybe not rightfully so but it appeared that the part this part here was not seating all the way down but I, I think it really was in retrospect and what happened was I put some cloth here and I was hitting it with a with a hammer and so on and uh, about an hour later I decided to turn the chair upside down to get the glue to move around as best as possible once it had set on the outside fairly well and uh, I'll, I'll turn the chair over I've got to put the camera down turn it off and I'll show you what had happened okay we've turned it right side up and as you can see right in this area here in this area here and a little area over here and I expect maybe it was from with the hammering it put a little uh, it opened up the wood a little bit and the glue actually came through so I managed to sand down the area and now I'm gonna have to uh, now I'm going to have to repaint in these areas and now I'm gonna have to put more uh, more clear on but overall I mean I, it's looking nice I really like the way it's coming out I'm really satisfied and I'm gonna just paint right over the excess glue I want to keep that excess glue in place like I said for more stability so I did a real quick 
uh, masking of the area. This is how I masked off to paint over the glued pieces. Nothing fancy. And finished painting on the bottom. What I also did was using this product, this super glue, this Gorilla Super Glue, I elected to go back into all little joint areas here and for example down in down in here and just there's a little there's a little brush that comes with this. Just brush some of the super glue material and totally other joint areas. Might be totally unnecessary, but that's just what I opted to do. The rocking chair project is now complete. Very happy the way it turned out. It's nice and tight. Finishes beautiful on it. I used probably about, I'm going to say about two and a half cans or so of the brown paint. It was Rust-Oleum, and I went with the Rust-Oleum because that particular shade of the brown is what my wife selected, and that's what she wanted. So that's what we got. Probably used about a half a can or so of uh, lacquer on it to, to give the finish an extra little protection. I don't know, I put at least at least 40 hours of time into this project, I'm sure. I didn't log it, but it took a, lo a long time. Um, there's one more thing that we did here. Actually, my wife picked it up. It's a nice seat cushion. Let me get that and put that on here for you. And it ties in the back with some strings. But as you can see, it accents it very nicely. It's beautiful. So again, I'd like to thank my friend uh, Martha for uh, giving me the chair so I can work on this project. Uh, unfortunately, Martha's confined to a uh, wheelchair, and she's unable to use the uh, this rocking chair anymore, which, which again belonged to her grandmother, which her grandmother acquired in the 1930s. So uh, we fixed, the, fixed it and uh, fixed the broken wooden parts on it and restored it and really happy to have it and find a nice home for it. So thank you, Martha.